Okay, so I guess it started. So are there any questions on the logistics? Any further questions uh, about the logistics? Okay, so I guess uh, people are all fine and happy. So uh, let me uh, start off with the content. So yesterday, what did we do? We were looking at, uh, you know, we just got a flavor of some of the AI applications. Several of several of you pointed out a lot of applications, like things like self-driving cars, question answering systems, recommender systems, and so on. Okay, and uh, we we also saw some applications in the case of you know doing domestic chores, and uh, you know some applications in space and so on. Okay, so uh, you know there were a whole lot of whole bunch of applications. Now um, I don't know if this point kind of came out when uh, you know I told you yesterday, but uh, the underlying theme for all these wide range of applications is that you're trying to do something in the similar way that a human does things, right? So uh, if it's question answering systems, you want to build it in such a way, in, in the way that, in the manner that humans uh, talk or humans answer something, okay? On the way the humans, uh, you know, perceive questions, you want to kind of mimic that kind, uh, that kind of behavior. In the case of domestic chores, you want uh, the robot to exactly do things like how you would do things. Okay. So uh, the underlying theme for you know AI or machine learning is to do things in a way that humans do. Now um, you know there uh, there is a slight catch when we say to do things in the way humans do, uh, because after all, what you're trying to mimic uh, is uh, what you're trying to model is a human behavior in a machine. Okay, and of course, a machine doesn't have feelings. Uh, whereas many things that we do, you know, humans, uh, we have some kind of, you know, emotional uh, thought or, you know, the thought process is slightly different. So, uh, yeah, you, you don't want to mimic exactly these kind of things. And of course, uh, that brings us to what is the difference like between rational and rational agents, right? So uh, the assumption that uh, generally in AI that you make is that the agents are rational. Okay, So uh, this is a core assumption that you make in the sense that, uh, you know, the way that the machine is going to make a decision is going to be entirely driven by the math and the way you model the system. Like, for example, there'll be some kind of uh, a function, with a utility function, which, is, which captures the gains in doing something. So the agent will always try to ensure that this utility is maximized. Okay, so this is in some sense also like how humans do things. Uh, but you know there are some factors. For example, I just want to show you this uh, thing. Sometimes humans make mistakes. I mean, um, it's maybe unknowingly also. Uh, so let me just show you the snippet. Is this visible? This power of price. This paragraph. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. Yeah, good. So here, what they're trying to say is that, you know, uh, these guys made a fake painkiller, okay? And they just modeled it in such a way that, you know, there was a lady who was in a business suit and she told the patients that, uh, you know, you will get pain relief, you know, very soon. And it's a very effective product and things like that. So now when they told that the drug costed this much, $250, uh, which is not, too expensive. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it, so there's some price for it uh, as a takeaway. And all the subjects reported pain relief. Okay, But when you say that the cost is little lesser, only half of them report pain relief. Okay, So one thing to note is that it's a fake painkiller. So the, it cannot give you pain relief. Uh, but this is all in the thinking. All right. So it's not always that you know we are um, rational in the true sense okay but these kind of things hamper uh, the way we look at uh, problems okay and also uh, another example is in the case of you know uh, these retail right like amazon and you know anything that you order so uh, many times like there is the shipping price 
Okay, so typically what happens is, and there's evidence of this, that uh, if you charge a huge shipping price, of course people don't want to buy, but if you you know charge even a minimal shipping price, people don't want to buy. And whereas instead if you say it's free shipping, they will uh, surely buy. I mean, the sales increase when you say it's free shipping. So this is the case even, you know, um, suppose for a product which costs something like 1,000 rupees, okay, if the uh, fee, if the, you know, the shipping fee is something like 50 rupees, uh, people don't want to, I mean, uh, you know, the sales are not very high, okay. Uh, whereas if you, you know, forego that 50 rupees shipping charge, people are, the sales increase. So this is kind of, in some sense, it's not a very rational thought because, you know, if you look at it, uh, to go to a nearby shop and buy something also, maybe you will, it, it will cost you 50 rupees, right? If you hire a cab or something, or cabs would be more maybe, but uh, in general, so you get the idea, right? So uh, this there's a slight difference here uh, in what you want the system to do. You want to design these rational agents. You don't want to entirely mimic the human behavior. But uh, in some sense, you want to take the good things okay, from human behavior, not to say the other uh, aspects are bad. I mean, it's just it just depends on the dynamics and the interactions uh, among humans. Right? So uh, the assumptions that AI generally makes is that all agents are rational. And what is an agent? Okay, So an agent is... Uh, you know, something that, you know, like, for example, in the Pac-Man game, the Pac-Man is the agent. So that's mm -hmm. the one that you are trying to, in some sense, give life to. Okay. And uh, so the agent perceives the environment around it. It sees, uh, you know, it senses uh, some rewards, it senses some losses, all this happens. And uh, then the agent is in a position to make decisions. Okay. So that's what an agent is. And here there are two types I and mean, broadly speaking there are two kinds of agents so one is called what is called these reflex agents okay and then we also have what are called planning agents okay and uh, so reflex agent is something like you know uh, the word reflex is you know that kind of reveals everything so uh, you just see around you and Whatever is the you know whatever is the action prescribed, you just do it. Okay, so what do you do when um, you touch something hot? You just immediately you take your hand away, right? So it's something like that. Like there's a lookup table. Like for each uh, you know you look at the world around you, and depending on how the world looks at, you make an action. So the actions all come from a lookup table. Okay, what action you do comes from a lookup table. So there is no uh, thought given to, okay, if I do this, what is going to happen in future, right? So that kind of a thing, the reflex agent doesn't do. Whereas the planning agent uh, accounts for, you know, what happens in the future, uh, how does the world, how does the environment around the agent change, okay? So all these aspects it, cons it's cons it, uh, it considers, and that's why you have this term plan. Right? So it is making a plan based on what happens around it in future. Okay. So um, yeah. So which do you think would would be a better agent? Which agents do you think would be better? Do you think it would be reflex agents or planning agents? Okay. Am I audible? Are you able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, what do you think is better? Like, do you understand the reflex agents and planning agents? The difference between the two? Ma'am, the combination of two. Like, at sometimes we will be needing uh, reflex agents and sometimes planning agents. Yeah. So that's right. So sometimes uh, a reflex agent is uh, could do well. Uh, but which do you think has more power or, you know, or let me put it in a different way, like uh, what are the number of situations in which 
you know reflex agent could do well and planning agent could do well it, you know is is it that planning agents do better in most situations or is it that reflex agents would do better in more situations what what is your sense of it any guesses so in planning you are uh, trying to take into account more information right you're trying to take into account what can happen if you do this action um right so kartik says reflex are faster uh, yeah reflex mostly planning pardon mostly planning planning, mostly planning yeah planning um, should be uh, you expect it to do better right because you are taking in more information now uh, there are some comments here that reflex are faster reflex seems more reliable so this we don't know for sure there are cases where you know reflex is not uh, necessarily reliable because it's ignoring some information right some key information that comes in the future it's going to ignore for example like uh, in the vacuum cleaner example it's if it's just going to run behind the dirt and ignore uh, maybe there's somebody who is just on the way who's coming to that spot but it's ignoring that then uh, it, you know it's not a reliable agent right and uh, faster also it depends it uh, all this depends on you know how you design the particular decisions but in terms of the final outcome uh, of both these agents typically we uh, tend to prefer a planning agent now you will also see a reflex agent later in one of your uh, later on uh, assignments Uh, your lab assignments you will design a reflex agent also which can also do well sometimes but a planning agent is a little more systematic in some sense okay so uh, the focus here in this course like for the next few classes will be on these planning agents okay and uh, so we will now in this class we'll start off with these search problems and uh, you will we'll try to address search problems and we'll try to design planning agents for these search problems so let me just tell you what i mean by search problems so uh, to think of search problems you can picture uh, you know these navigation systems or maybe like in google maps you want to go from one place to the other what is the route that you should take okay so you're uh, in some sense trying to search for a path from the start to the destination or in the case of pacman like i showed you one uh, example where you know the pacman is at one corner and it's trying to go to the other corner so what is the route it should follow how does it navigate itself okay so uh, for these kind of problems um, i mean so these are examples of search problems and how do we tackle this okay so uh, formally there are you know there are uh, you know the search framework has the following components so before that i just want to ask if the uh, tablet whatever i'm writing is it visible clearly yes ma'am uh, it's big and everything right it's the size is okay yes okay so yeah so at any point if you have difficulty in seeing what i'm writing please stop me okay so uh so the components of a search problem are you know you have these components so one is what is called a state space okay so uh, the world around you you know there are uh, you know there are different parameters or there are different configurations okay and you need to be in a position to you know um, you know capture all this information and that is what is a state space Okay, so we'll see examples uh, slowly. So this is all all uh, necessary details about the uh, world around you. So all necessary details about the world. Okay, and uh, yeah. So this is a state space. Now at each point of time, you will uh, there'll be a particular state in which you are in. So for example, in Pac-Man. uh the state uh, is in some sense the location where is the location of batman where is the location of the food 
where is the location of the ghosts and all that okay so it can be a, a collection of multiple uh, such parameters okay and um, next thing we have is a successor function okay so the successor function so what this tells is now you are in some state what is the you know like okay maybe before that let me just also define one more quantity which is the actions okay uh, so state space and then you have a set of actions so for the pacman example um, the pacman is at some location now it can go east it can go north it can go west it can go south uh, and in some uh, positions it cannot go i mean not it cannot take all possible actions okay so the actions is just the set of uh, you know um, set of next you know some kind of an event which leads to a next state okay and then we have the successor function so this is a function which takes into account each state so at each state um, if you take each action for each action which state does it take you to for each action where do you land up okay so that is what is the successor function and uh, sometimes you can have some kind of a cost associated with each action so in that case that also becomes part of the successor function and then you have a start state okay so this is where uh, in pacman for instance where does it start from so what is the representation of the world in the initial state when it begins and finally you have a goal state okay so that is where you want to ultimately land up that's the state at which you want to ultimately land up and what a search problem is supposed to give you is uh, so the output has to be a sequence of actions which will take you so yeah let me just write it here so sequence of actions um which will take you uh from the start state to the goal state okay okay and the sequence of actions is also called a plan okay so let me just uh, you know this is like a lot of uh, some kind of definitions but let me just take an example and uh, so that it's clear Okay, so let's take the Pacman example, where uh, the task is for Pacman to eat all the dots, so eat all the food. Okay, so you remember this uh, example from yesterday, I hope. So, okay, so yeah, so the objectives there are no ghosts here. There's only the Pacman, the yellow uh, one that you saw yesterday, and uh, it has to, you know. Uh, there are def uh, various particles food particles and it has to finish eating all the food okay so now how so this is a search problem so what are the you know these components that we can write here okay so let's look at each of them so what is the state space how do you model each state of pacman what are the things that you need to model in the world right so uh, one thing is you know you need you need the location of pacman so where is pacman and you need all the positions of the food right all the food positions and um, anything else you can think of what are the things that matter for this uh, sort of game positions of ghost position of ghosts yes positions of ghosts is yeah that's also something you can do but uh, in this game which is eat all the food so there are no ghosts anymore but yeah that's also there in the system so let me just put it for now so ghost positions um yeah okay anything else uh positions balls. of the balls ball, yes yeah so positions of i'll just call it capsules right so positions of the capsules okay so did somebody priority of directions which one priority for directions 
so uh, what do you mean by a priority for direction yes, going uh, in which direction uh, it's most preferable for that position yeah okay so uh, yeah so that so it turns out that you know for search problems you don't model that for each state okay so the thing is you want to also keep as less information as possible okay and uh, but yet be able to uh, you know solve the problem like get a sequence of actions so this kind of a thing right you know for each state what is the best action possible that is something that you can later figure out right uh, those don't uh, i mean it's not an independent entity in some sense right uh, but these things are you know there are different possible configurations which are kind of they don't depend on each other right so that's what you will use in the state space okay, that will not, those are the kind of things that you like those are you can think of as you know individual atoms so uh, you cannot recreate one from the other right so you want you don't want redundant information but this is a very good point like how do you design a state space what are the things I mean, that should go into okay so yeah so yeah these are some of the uh, points in the state space so this seems pretty good uh, okay so another thing maybe you could have is you know pacman has a direction right like in the sense you know it can pacman is it can be facing which direction it's facing facing uh, towards the right or facing towards the you know west you know these are also different uh, possibilities so this can also be there okay so uh, facing direction of pacman but we'll just say facing direction So these are some possibilities. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and maybe okay. So what are the possible actions it can take? So now we are modeling Pacman. So at any state. So a state, any state will have these all these parameters: the location, the food positions, the ghost positions positions of the capsules and what directions facing okay so maybe uh, this would be let me just make it a little more explicit so these could be like x y right these are the coordinates and this can be a list of uh, you know positions where you find the food particles so maybe let me call it x f y f okay so this can be a list and similarly you have a you know list of positions for the ghost and uh, you know all these are going to be lists the positions and the facing direction this could be uh, maybe one of those four right like something like this or something like this or just two right or it can also be like this and something like this okay maybe these are the four options okay so what are the actions possible for a pacman once it's you know these are you can think of these as moves right like how can it move how can it start moving so what could these be it can go up down left right yes yes exactly up down left right so i'll just say it as north east south west right so these are the four possible actions right and then you have what is called a successor function Okay, so the successor function tells you for each state that uh, the Pac-Man is in, or that's for each state of the game. Now, if it takes this action, each of these actions, if it takes, where will it land up? Which state will it land up? So that's what you have to define. So let me, uh, maybe it's just easy to just draw, uh, you know, just the visual for this. So suppose this is a small Pac-Man layout. So here, um, See, suppose these are the valid positions, okay? And uh, suppose Pac-Man is here, like this, okay? And suppose the food particles are here, okay? And let me say it's like this. And so the food particles, so I'll just uh, label the coordinates. So Pac-Man is at, this is 1, 1. And this position is 1, 2. And this is 1, 3. And here I have 2, 1. Uh, two two and two three 
Okay, so these are all the valid positions, uh, assuming that you know, uh, you know, you, he cannot go in the in between positions. He cannot land at something in between. Okay, so he can only land at these integral uh, positions. Um, suppose that's the case. So this is one state now. So here, uh, Pac-Man position is one one. The food positions are all these. There are no capsules. There are no ghosts. Okay, so all these are empty, and um, the facing direction is this one. Okay, so uh, so now if the Pac-Man if the Pac-Man decides to go east, okay, so if it takes the action east, what is going to happen is uh, first it's going to shift. It was at one one. It's going to move here. And uh, this food item, it has eaten. Okay, if it moves to the right, it has eaten this food item, and all these other food particles will remain. Okay, so this is actually a new state, and this new state is characterized by Pac-Man position being one two, and food position now it's a list with three items. Earlier it was a list. Uh, sorry, it's a list with four items. Earlier it had five items. Now it's going to have just these four positions. So it's going to have two one, uh, two two, two three, and one three. So that's going to be the food positions. Okay, and uh, all other things remain the same. The facing direction. So this is actually a new state that you have bought while applying the action east on uh, on this state. Okay, so that is what a successor function is. So successor function, if you apply this state, so let me call this state as S1, and let me call this S2. So if you apply the action east on S1, what you're going to get is S2. Okay, so that's why it's a function. Okay, and uh, sometimes you can these actions can also have some cost. Okay, so. Uh, sometimes you can also include the cost of this east action when applied to a state here. Okay, so but anyway, let's just keep it simple for now. Uh, suppose there are no costs at the moment. It's just uh, to which state is he going to land up? Is the Pac-Man going to land up? Okay, so like this for even every state in the system, you're going to have uh, you know some possible legal actions that it can take, and what is the uh, ultimate outcome? What is the next state? Okay, so a collection of all these is what defines the successor function. Okay, uh, is this clear? Are there any questions? Any questions? Is this clear? Um, okay, I want to hear from some of you. Sejal, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, any confusions, any doubts, anything? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, fine. So uh, just stop me, okay, in case something is unclear. So in this game, uh, we define the state space, we define the actions, and we define the success of function. Now, there were two more things. One was the start state and the goal state. So one of these states uh, in the state space is going to be a start state. So the start state here is suppose Pac-Man is going to start from uh, this position. So this is going to be the start state. Okay, so whatever representation you have for this state, this is going to be the start. And uh, the final, the goal state, so that is where you want to eventually be. Right? So that is, um, you know, uh, the game here is eat all dots, eat all food. So you don't want uh, any food anywhere else, okay? So uh, so there are different. I mean, there are different possibilities here. So one is you know uh, the Pac-Man is here, and all food is empty. You know, so <clears throat> so basically this tuple has to be empty. These food positions have to be empty, and uh, other possibility is you can have Pac-Man here. In you know this is one two. So Pac-Man position can be here. And like that, so there'll be various possibilities. But the important thing is a food uh, list is empty. Okay, so this is a case where I said like uh, there are no ghosts. Okay, so there are no ghosts in this game, no ghosts to take care of. Okay, so actually, so for a game like this where the ghosts are not 
uh, relevant, you actually don't need these ghost positions. I mean, so they don't matter for this game. OK, uh, so you have to, when you design your state space, you uh, design it in such a way that you know there are not too many things. Okay, because there is an overhead with more items you want to characterize in your state, there'll be uh, difficulties like computational issues will arise. So what you want to keep is just the minimal set of uh, items, I mean, minimal set of uh, entities, but which still give you some use. There is some use for, you know, putting all, uh, all these parameters. Okay, so uh, I hope this example has been clear. Maybe we'll just do one more example. So let's take uh, the example of, you know, it's a routing example again. So suppose you want to go, uh, you want to find a route from uh, IIT to, you know, you're an IIT, so many of you are coming back, and you want to find a route to, uh, okay, Chapora Fort. Have you all been there to Chapora, by the way? It's this no. Dilchata place, right? No? Okay. So hopefully when you guys come over here, sometime you should visit. It's a nice place. Okay. So, um, yeah. So uh, let's think of this problem. So what, uh, I mean, how do you visualize this, right? So uh, there is one location, which is IIT. Okay. And uh, in Goa, there is this place, Madgaon, which is kind of to the south. Okay, and then you have Panji somewhere here, maybe. Uh, maybe the airport is somewhere here. Okay, and you know Vasco or you know some locations like this, and then maybe Chapura is somewhere in the north. Okay, something like this, and in between you have maybe Candolim. Okay. So you should go to these places huh, when you come to nice uh, places. Okay, so uh, what you have here is like some kind of roads between all these places, right? I mean, so there's a road from IIT to Mudgown, um, there's a road to Vasco, then maybe there's a road like this, and maybe some kind of a road in between road like this, uh, a road to Panji, then maybe something which goes north to Candolim, and maybe somewhere it breaks here to Chapora, something of this form. Okay, so there are a couple of roads here. Let me just label them like this. This is road A between Mudgaon and Vasco. This is road B, road C, road D, road E, F, G, H. So, okay, maybe let's put something else also here, maybe something in old Goa. And just so that it you know it makes it a little more interesting. Otherwise, the route from IIT to Chapora is just this, right? And maybe there's something else here, some Rai Bandar or something. Okay, this, this is you can see my knowledge of Goa in the last few months, picked up in the last few months. Okay. So yeah. Okay, so these let's say this is the map that you have that the agent has, and it has to figure out how to get to Chapora from IIT. Okay, so now uh, let's try to model this problem in terms of these various uh, entities we just defined: the search, the state space, the actions, the successor functions, and all all these uh, aspects. So, what are the states here? So the state space is what? Can somebody tell me? Guys, any thoughts? What is a state space? Whether there's a path between like any two locations, like maybe that. Yeah, so that would be the ultimate outcome of uh, your search problem modeling exercise, right? Ultimately, you want a path. You want to find a path. So uh, the search problem, you write some things. I mean, you model these state spaces, actions, and everything. And at the end of it, the sequence of actions should be a path. OK? So uh, then the initial so, position. Right. So. 
so that is the start state. So what? Let me just write it here. So the start state here for this problem, the start state is IIT. Okay, so that's a clue. So IIT is a start state, and the goal state is to be at Chapora. Okay, so the goal state is Chapora. So you can say you can see that these two states are actually some locations. right these are some locations of goa so the state space actually you want this to be the collection of all uh, locations so this is a collection of all locations okay so all these uh, so this is actually trying to input where you are at the moment okay so if the you know configurations if the state is raibandar that means that at this moment you are at raibandar and uh, yeah so okay so that's what the state space is it's the set of all the locations where all can you be at any point of time okay so that's what is relevant to get a route from iit to chapura okay now the actions so the actions here are just going to be the roads so if you are at iit now next you want to decide which road to take right that's the next move for you to do okay so this is uh, it just translates to roads okay so if you are at iit then the possible um, roads you can take are this road e or um, and also maybe this road will be called g so e and g are the possible roads okay now if you are at old goa the possible routes are again g and maybe let me call this j g and j are the possible roads if you are at madgaon the possible roads are a and b okay so overall the set of all actions is all these roads a b c d e f g h j all the collection of all roads forms the set of actions okay of course it can turn out that some actions are not possible at some states that is fine okay so then out of this list of actions only some uh, some of them will be applicable for each place okay so that is that is okay but when you say the set of actions you will list all the roads okay and uh, then you have the start state is iit and goal state is chapora now uh, the one of the key things is the successor function so remember what this was this was for each state if you take this action where are you going to land up which state are you going to be in right so this would be like uh, an example of you know this component would be you know if you take if you are at mudgaon so mudgaon is one state So Madgaon is one state in your game, and if you uh, take the road B, so if this is this is the action, and this is the state, so if you take uh, you know action B in the state Madgaon, uh, you're going to land up in IIT. So that is the new state. So this is the new state. Okay. So like this, you will have. Uh, you know some components for each of these routes so f of uh, mudgaon and a is going to give you vasco okay now f of um, iit and g is going to give you old goa so if i take this road this one i'm going to get get reach old goa right so like this you can define it i mean this this is a, again a big list so depending on for each place if you take one uh, road where can you reach okay so this is uh, this kind of completes the characterization now you can check that you know if you want the route from iit to chapora what you need is the start state is iit and from here you need a sequence of actions so uh, you need a sequence of actions which can ultimately bring you to chapora okay so here the sequence of actions so which is a plan plan or sequence of actions uh in this case so this is what you have to ultimately find so this is let me write this separately uh this you don't model this this is what uh, the search problem has to come up with okay so the output expected output will be something like this the expected output is a plan or sequence of actions uh an example is 
you know, you're starting at IIT, that is fixed. The start state is fixed and the goal state is also known. It's it's exactly one state, which is Chapura. So one plan is you can follow this route, right? So you can go here, then you can go here, and then you can come here, OK? So one plan is to take G, J. OK, there's one more path here. So let me call it K. This road, I'm calling it K, OK? So G, J, K, H. Okay, so this is one plan. So G, J. K H. Okay, so this is a sequence of actions. Okay. Now there are also others, right? So you could end up also going this way. So you could go through this path. Let me mark it in black. So this one E, F, and H. This is also a possibility. Right? So another possibility is E F H. Okay. So these are the various plans. And uh, expected output is one of these, OK? So, so one of these plans, one of these uh, plans. So these are, there's a plan one, there's a plan two. And also, you could um, end up cycling also, right? Like you can go to Mudgown, you can go to Vasco, come back. And you know this is also possible. So there are many plans in that sense, OK? So what a search problem wants to find is uh, you know at least one plan. So give me some plan to start from IIT and reach Chapura. Okay. So is this clear? Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, I should just stop for a minute. You know, this, this is probably a bit new. So um, any questions, guys? Is it clear? Oh. Mom, I had this doubt. Uh, how do how does the we suppose if we are IIT go and now we want to go to uh, the next stop, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to decide. Suppose we all go and on Pondi maybe. How do mm -hmm. we decide that uh, which way is it going to lead to uh, Chapura and maybe one might go farther from Chapura on the opposite end? How do you know that this is towards the uh, this is the right route? This one is not. Yes, exactly. That is what we are going to do next. So uh, what I told you is how you will model it. Now you want to come up with a plan. And for that, there are going to be some algorithms that we will do. So exactly that's the uh, question that we'll consider next. So given this, this is the configuration. The state space is given. The actions are this, start state and goal state. And this is the successor function. Now, uh, how will I find a plan? OK, so yes, exactly that is the question that all these search problems address. And we are going to look at some algorithms for this. So what I just told you here is what I expect my algorithm to do. So uh, this is kind of in some sense like, um, you know, I'm just telling you the output beforehand so that you know what to expect. OK, uh, but what the search problem, the algorithm should do is it should take all these uh, things, the state space action, the search problem definition, you know, from all these state space actions, the start state, goal state, and successor function. It should take in all these and then produce a plan. Okay, So we are going to do that. There are some algorithms for this, and that's what we are going to do. OK. Um, Okay, Deep, is it is it fine? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So uh, you know there can be different ways to model the state space. This is one way. Maybe there are different representations also, but eventually it should encode these kind of objects, and you should be able to say that the final plan is something like this. Okay. There, uh, for example, in the Pac-Man example. You know, you can, uh, the way you represent the states, the food positions, right? So here I'm saying that there's going to be a list. Another possibility I can do is, you know, I can take in each and every, you know, this list can have, you know, as many as the possible food positions. I mean, as many as the positions. So suppose there are uh, some F positions. So F uh, possible positions throughout Pac Man. Or maybe let me call it L because I want it to be all possible locations in the board. So all locations. So there are L locations. And another possibility is I can have this to be a bit vector, right? So 
so something like this. So, okay, so at the first location, there is no food. At the second location, there is food. At the third location, there is food. Like that. This can be as long as L. This can be a vector of size L. I can also represent this way. Okay, so that is not a that's not an issue. There are I mean you typically choose what uh, is most efficient. Okay, but uh, whatever you choose as your representation, it should capture these entities. Okay, um, so I hope this has been clear. Maybe uh, yeah, I think it's already twelve twenty. So uh, yeah, I think maybe we'll stop here, and uh, maybe in the next class we'll continue from here. So. We'll have to analyze how big the state space can get, okay, and alternate ways of representation. And finally, we will look at uh, this problem that Deep asked: How do you get this plan? Okay, so that's the main interest. Okay, so I will uh, stop here for today, and maybe I'll just hang back in case there are any questions. Okay, so if not, uh, thanks everyone. We'll meet tomorrow at eleven thirty.